Hi there, it's Michael Kahn here again for Enhindsight, and today I'm chatting to a very special person, Eric Elderstein, and we're going to be talking about crowdsourcing, uh, something Eric is uh, refining the art of developing, I think. Um, how are you, Eric? Today I'm a little tired. <laughs> yes. um, an eight-week-old baby uh, is keeping me very busy at night, and my internet startup is keeping me busy during the day. Okay. So, not much time to do anything else. I remember the days when I used to go to movies. It just yes. doesn't happen at the moment. Yeah, no, f write that off for the next three years at least. You know, it becomes, <laughs> a, it becomes a treat. In fact, the first time I went to the movies afterwards, uh, one of the girls in the office looked at me and said, are you mad? How can you take your wife to a movie? I was like, you don't have kids, do you? You don't understand. You really don't understand. So, yeah. Eric, um, can you give me a bit of a background of you and, and specifically into Everly because you have done a lot. I mean, you, you're the CEO of Everly. You, you, you started Spring Leap. You started Incubator. And, and you're also an angel investor. So, so apart from uh, you know, trying to keep Everly going, there's a lot going on around you. And I'm sure you're crossing over a lot of, of looking after babies as well as work. Can you give us a bit of a background and, and an insight into Everly? Because I really want to talk about the idea behind crowdsourcing and how SMEs can really tap into the power of the crowd and, and the value that it gives them. So until about a decade ago, I was a financial analyst. I was a okay. boring accountant. I was doing a lot of number crunching. Okay. And it was 99, and I thought that the internet revolution was taking off. And yeah. I thought, where better to do it than in London? Popped on a plane, went to London, worked in bars for a couple of months until I managed to raise a round of funding from some investors, okay. set up an office, and the internet bubble burst. <laughs> and it took me first to raise the money. It took me about six weeks to lose all of it. Yeah. And at that stage, I was hooked. And so got involved in internet companies in South Africa. Uh, I worked for one of the big internet casino groups. And in yeah. 2003, it was the right place, right time. We set up Clicks to Customers, yes. which became the first pay-per-click company in South Africa. And Mark Schatter funded us. And from there, we just got more and more involved in different internet ventures. Yeah. We set up an affiliate network where we match internet marketers and people that are looking for traffic. We set up a small website builder, which then became quite large, called Yola, That's which right. currently has 6 million people around the world using it. And about four years ago, we realized that social media was incredible, but if you could combine it with getting the crowd to actually do something rather than just talk or rather than yes. just comment, it would be so much more powerful. Yes. So four years ago, we created a company called Spring Leap. And really, the idea is we've got a collection of designers all over the world. We've currently got 20,000. And we run interesting competitions for them. Sometimes it's a okay. T-shirt competition. Sometimes it would be a chewing gum competition. Like we've just done the Stimmerol to design the latest chewing gum packages. And we get the designers to design the product. We get the public. And we have a few hundred thousand people commenting and voting and interacting. And they basically help us work out what are the best products. Yeah. Should the product be that we either give to the give to the corporate, or what is the product that we should be selling online on e-commerce or to the shops? And it's a form of market research, but it, at the same time, it's very entertaining and engaging. It, and yeah, sorry, and sorry. So Springy came about, and I have to say, in the beginning, the first year or two was probably the toughest time of my life because the same as Pay Per Click when we did it in South Africa, it was on the cutting edge, and we had to go and educate the market. And when yes. we started Spring Leap, we had to educate the market about both social media to a certain extent, but especially crowdsourcing. And it's now four years later, and crowdsourcing is just starting to get momentum mm -hmm. in South Africa. I spent a couple of months last year living in Silicon Valley, yes. and I looked at what is happening there in the space in terms of social media and crowdsourcing, and it usually happens in South Africa. It's always here three, four, five years later, and I think we're in for a very, very exciting time in the next few years. Well, that's encouraging. That, that makes me excited. It really does. Um, but the idea of the crowd and, and your point about research, because I remember as a brand manager getting very frustrated, you get the aggregated research coming back and by the time you've applied it, it becomes irrelevant. And understanding your customer is becoming more and more important, especially in the social environment. Um, how, how does a, a, a small SME start this process and starts engaging their customer on a, on a crowdsourcing platform because it's very easy to copy what the big boys are doing and there are a lot of fantastic examples you know Dell have got it, Procter & Gamble have got it, Unilever have got it they're all doing this now but how does a small SME start doing this in a way that is relevant to their business? I guess the best way of me illustrating that is for me to just finish the story of my life Okay. I got up to Spring Leap yes. and okay. what happened after Spring Leap is that in the beginning we were running internal yes. competitions and after a few months, brands, some of them 
smaller, some of them larger, approached us and said they love the concept of being able to get the crowd involved both in engaging and the crowdsourcing, but it would be really nice if they could do it with their own community rather than leverage yes. on another person's platform. Yes. And that's where really Everly came about. And so just to illustrate the way I think about it, there's two things you could do. You could either go onto a crowdsourcing platform, and there's currently about 12 or 1,300 crowdsourcing platforms around the world. If you want to get a logo done, you'd go to 99designs. Right. If you wanted a t-shirt designed, you'd go to Spring Leap. If you wanted a problem solved, you could go to Idea Bounty. But you're leveraging someone else's community. Mm. So what happened a few years ago is that organizations started building engagement tools in social media. And yes. until we started doing it with Everly a couple of months ago, it was really about engaging really just for fun. So polls, questionnaires, competitions, trivia, all of that thing in social media. And with Everly, we started realizing that there would be a need to bring the two of them together. So why not let an organization be able to have fun with their crowd, engage them, entertain them, let them vote and comment, but at the same time get some sort of business value back out of it. Mm. That business value could be solving a problem, generating idea, designing the new company logo, doing some yes. market research about whether this poster for the company is better than that poster. And at the same time, because of the whole social media element, you get people then sharing the company's brand and you get the people becoming brand ambassadors at the same time. Okay. So with it, we built the ability for organizations, whether they're small or large, to be able to, number one, engage with their current community. Number two is through the social media virality, bring on a lot more people. And number yes. three is hopefully get some sort of business value out of it. Fantastic. So to, to make this tangible and contextual, what, what I could then effectively do is I want to start a new business. Um, but I don't know what to call it. Let's say I want to get into the cycling environment. I can go onto Everly and I can create a platform. And then I can, through the social media platforms there, engage all the different cyclists and say, guys, I don't know what to call this because I'm not a cyclist, but I do know that there's a business opportunity here for me. What should I call it? Come up with ideas and then vote that the name of the company, the, the type of products that these guys are going to buy, etc., etc. And in the beginning, the way I would do it is I'd go create a fan page and we've got different products. We've got free yes. products as well. So for a small business, you'd probably start off by using one of our free products and you would install it. We've got a wizard that takes five minutes to install okay. it. And you would maybe come up with a couple of names yourself and then you would ask the community to come up with ideas. And then you would send an email out to all your friends, to family, to everyone you know, and you would say, please give us a name. And through the whole viral benefits of social media, they would start inviting their friends, telling other people. Okay. The one thing I can say is that it is a bit easier for larger organizations mm. because people like to be incentivized. And often, smaller businesses don't have interesting prizes they can put up for interesting incentivization. And just okay. the total side, and maybe we're going a little bit far now, I don't think incentivization always has to be financial. So what I've said to other people is, why not say the winning prize would be lunch with myself, or lunch with a friend which is well-known, or uh, lunch with a musician. It could all be, always be something that's fun and interesting, but might not cost the business owner a lot of money. Okay, so it, it's a difficult one because also the minute you put that financial incentive, you're not sure you're getting the return that you actually want because people are maybe liking you, for example, for the sake of liking you and getting the prize. True, so there's two ways of thinking about crowdsourcing. The one side is that the crowd do it because they are so passionate and they're yes. so involved, they just want to get involved. The second side of it is that you have a passionate people, but you incentivize them a little bit. Now, the best example I can give you about the first one is Starbucks. They've got a site and it's called My Starbucks Idea. They launched yes. it about four years ago, and they've got a very large community. They've got 20 million people on Facebook, for example, which in South African context is astronomical. No one has 20 million fans here. But yeah. they said to their fans, how can we become a better organization? Tell us. And they wanted to comment and vote on each other's ideas, and we'll look at the top 20, 50, 100 ideas. And over the last four years, they've had 70,000 ideas given to them. Wow. ranging from how it can be a better atmosphere when you walk in the Starbucks into how you can stop yourself burning your hand when you hold the cup of coffee, all the way to designing new flavors of coffee for Starbucks. And I've seen so many ideas implemented by Starbucks in the last years, but what's really interesting is they don't incentivize. They don't give prizes. They might say thank you to the winning ideas, but yes. people do they very loyal and passionate about the brand, and they want to make the brand better. Now... That takes a very special type of brand. For most organizations, you probably do need to add that loyal evangelism with some type of incentivization. 
Fantastic. I mean, it's, it's actually mind-blowing because you can't think up those ideas. I mean, 70,000 ideas. You can't think of them as a brand. You can't even begin to understand that. But now, in, in the South African contest, as an SME, you know, the Starbucks example is great. What are the key challenges in the South African environment um, for an SME, uh, in, specifically for an SME? Because it's, 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 it's a whole new playing field for them. I think it's not only for SMEs. I think it's for everyone, large okay. organizations, NGOs, political parties. I think that social media is a very new space. I think crowdsourcing is a very interesting and new space. Yeah. And I think for a lot of people in South Africa, it's a learning curve. And going through a form of education, I spend hours every day trying to keep up to date with all the latest social media and crowdsourcing news. And I think for a business owner, whether they're large or small, trying to keep up with everything that's happening in the digital space yeah. to get running their own business is a big challenge. It's impossible but, almost, yeah. Yeah, sorry, sorry, Eric. But, oh. but to answer your question, let me take a slightly larger organization and show you how they practically used it. Okay. We worked with the bank Capitec a couple of weeks ago, yes. and they had a relatively nice community of Facebook of fans, and we started working with them there, 20,000, and they said they want to engage their fans, they want to be able to use viral on social media, but they really want to understand from South African people how banking in South Africa can be improved. And they put a very quick challenge up on Facebook using our software, and they put a 5,000 Rand prize up. So the incentivization wasn't mm. unbelievably huge, no. and they, the question was, how can banking in South Africa be improved? And in three weeks, they had 700 ideas wow. from Africans, and the quality of the ideas was so incredible that they actually took some of the ideas and they put a package together and they sent it to our finance minister and he actually responded to say that he was flabbergasted to see the quality of ideas that South Africans can come up with. So it doesn't always mean you have to get tens of thousands of ideas and you don't always have to have a huge community. Every single person potentially could be a gold mine of ideas. Yeah. You just have to tap into people in the right way. You know, I, I, I'm inspired actually because it comes down to interests and passions because uh, I, I'm actually getting goosebumps just talking to you because <laughs> th no, this really excites me, Eric. I mean, you, you know, you, you look at the Arab Springs of the world and you look at where we go as society and we do need to create a new society in South Africa. You know, there's a lot that needs to be done and, and these are the kind of platforms that can create these kind of societies, surely, eh? Hey? So interestingly enough, because of the baby, I'm up very early in the morning. And this morning I was watching E! News at about 6 o'clock and yeah. they were talking about public opinion. Yes. And when they were thinking about it, they still think about it in the old ways. They were saying they're going to put government gazettes in newspapers and they're going to put yeah. posters up and they're going to try to get people to give comments on things which interest them. And I was thinking to myself, surely if everyone is already using social media and already on websites, why not make it fun and engaging at the yes. same time as trying to get real opinion? So if you, they were, it was actually the Joburg minister who was talking about trying to get some sort of information for some new parliamentary thing that they're trying to do. Surely yeah. you make it, make it engaging, make it an interesting brief, get people to give their ideas, let people start commenting and voting on the ideas. Yeah. And you'll see that the organizations that are looking for creativity and innovation are going to start seeing a lot better results than they did in the past. And people are going to be more excited actually getting involved in the process. Absolutely. Uh, you, you, you're going to be sorry you chatted to me because I'm about to hammer your service quite badly, Eric. <laughs> Eric, just really to, to, to close off, um, I'm, I'm sure the one question just people... Just to mention that one quickly, yeah. we actually have someone in our meeting room at the moment from Microsoft because we're running the Zero Cloud. Yes. And obviously with the Zero Cloud, it's expandable. So a challenge would be to see if we can bring down the Microsoft to Zero Clouds. <laughs> <laughs> If it does, I'd be very impressed. Okay, we'll, we'll take up that challenge. We'll get the whole community <laughs> going here. Eric, just, just the, the last question I really want to ask you, and, I, and I'm sure it's what will be in people's minds, is how mature is our market? Uh, you, you talked in, initially about you need to educate the market constantly. And, and I think with you know, the, the 10,000-hour principle that um, Blink, what's this, uh, Gladwell uh, shared well, with us, and, yeah, Malcolm yeah. Gladwell, most of these platforms are not even close to a thousand hours old. So no one's really an expert in this field, let alone the user. How mature is the South African public and, and how easy is it to engage the South African public on these ideas? 
I don't think we should be looking at the South African public and saying, are they educated or aren't they? Okay. I think we should be okay. saying, what do we need to make to get people involved? And okay. if that means making it more fun, entertaining, simpler, um, just a natural way of them doing it, we need yes. to actually work out what it will take to get them involved. To give you a quick scenario, a friend of mine works for a big advertising agency, and he ran a campaign where he said to South Africa, buy a bottle of beer, look in the bottle top, and there'll be a number, an SMS the number with who you want the player for the soccer team to be, and you can help us select the new soccer okay. team which starts the, the game. And he's won awards all over the country over the last couple of months for this, and I was having a chat to him, and I said, that's crowdsourcing. You basically yes. will like the African public to come up with whatever soccer team they want. So I think with all this new technology we're doing, we don't always have to label it. We don't have to say, this is social media, this is crowdsourcing. Good point. Make people get involved. He's got hundreds of thousands of people basically choosing the soccer teams, and they're loving it, and they're having fun, and they're engaged. Yeah. You don't have to go and throw silly terms around. Just get people involved in the process. You, you know, as a parent, I'm, I'm sure uh, if I had to ask you what you want for your child, the first thing you're going to say is, I just want them to be happy. You know, and, and at the end of the day, that's what we do want to be. And if you could just make your customers happy in, in fun ways and, and in, it's in more serious ways, you, you're going to win the game at the end of the day. You know, and, and, and I think that's fantastic. Yeah. Eric, thank you. I, I mean, uh, my, my, my mind's buzzing. So I'm, I'm going to really give a, a very good go at crashing those servers. <laughs> Coffee, my mind's buzzing as well. <laughs> so thank you for the time and, and thank you for, for sharing. And I really appreciate it. I know you're very busy. So thank you for the time. Wonderful. Good chatting and have a great day, everyone. Thanks, Eric. Cheers, man.